Welcome to a really gentle flow series for whenever life feels really stressful and you just need to relax and let go. Now in this series, we are going to do gentle stretching, tiny bit of restorative, but mostly just getting into all those spots that hold tension so that you can really relax and get a good night's sleep. Let's get to our practice. Now, for today's practice, I would recommend having some sort of blanket or firm cushion that you can sit on and a yoga block if you have one. If you don't have one, don't worry. I will share with you options that you can do instead. Now, if you want to keep your socks on, you may. Um, my students always joke that a really good class is ones in which they don't have to take their socks off. <laughs> so this makes it a little bit more relaxing and self-care-ish, right? Okay, so we're going to begin lying down. Go ahead and lay down and keep your knees bent. I just want you to take your arms out to your side a little bit, 45 degrees away from the body. Draw the shoulders under a little bit. And just take a couple of breaths, let your body relax. I love taking a couple of cleansing breaths, like a deep breath into the nose, releasing through the mouth and a sigh. And just feeling your body relax. You can close your eyes here and just let yourself begin to let go. Let your shoulders relax. And just let yourself relax and connect with your breath. You're just feeling as it floats in and out of your body. And just let your body relax more deeply as you exhale. Imagine you're exhaling stress and tension. Let's take the relaxation a little bit more deeply by doing a vagus nerve release. So the vagus nerve stimulates the relaxation response in the body. And this super simple technique you can do, you're going to lace your fingers and cradle your head in the lace of the fingers. Now, if you can only do one, <clears throat> one hand, because, you know, you have a sore shoulder, that's fine. If you want to do, um, if you just want to hold the head because you can't get your hands up here, that's fine too. Just feel where your head is re resting on the floor because the main purpose of these hands is to keep the head steady. So you just want to make sure the head doesn't move. All we're going to move are the eyes. So you're going to gaze straight up and just relax your body. And then gaze out the right corner of your eye. So looking straight to the right and your head does not move, just your gaze. And we're gonna hold for about 30 seconds. You can go up to a minute. The purpose is to wait until you get a little bit of a release from the body, which can show up as a swallow, a deeper breath, sometimes a yawn. So if that happens for you, you can then return your gaze straight up. We're going to go for another 10 more seconds or so. If you don't feel that release, don't worry. You're still getting the benefits. All right. And then gaze straight up again. <clears throat> Steady the head. And then go to the left. And just keep breathing in the belly here. Eyes are relaxed. You're not forcing the gaze. It's a very gentle gaze. Foreheads relax. Sometimes we raise the eyebrows when we're doing things with our eyes. 
Another few seconds. Again, just notice if you feel that release. And then release and stare straight up. If you have the hands up, bring them down and just take a breath and just notice how your body is feeling now. And you'll bring your right knee up into your chest and then your left and give the knees a hug. You can hug behind the knees if you have any tension, if that hurts your knees to hold on the outside. And just let your back relax. You can rock side to side if that feels good. And then take your knees wide and just draw the knees down toward your armpits. Just getting into that groin area a little differently. And then you're going to set the left foot down, hold on to the right knee, draw it in, and extend up. Now, I want you to grab behind the thigh, and you can have any level of bend that you need in the leg here. And you're just going to extend and bend a few times. We're just warming up the muscle, the hamstring back here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then just extend the leg, relax your shoulders, feel a little bit of a stretch right in that hamstring. And you're going to circle the ankle. Just draw the biggest circle you can with your big toe. Change direction. Just warming up around that ankle. And then I want you to bend the knee and you're going to bring that knee down toward your armpit, but keep that the knee open so you're not dropping the foot. You want to keep the shin as perpendicular to the floor as you can. And if you can reach for the foot, go ahead and grab the foot. Or you can also hold right behind the knee or anywhere along the calf is fine too. Gently draw down. And then release, cross the right ankle over the left knee and draw your left knee up. And just relax the shoulders. Breathing into your belly. And then set the legs down. You're going to cross the right leg all the way over. Bring your arms out like a cactus or straight out to the side if you want. Cactus can be kind of nice if you can do this because it does help release the shoulders a little bit. You're going to take the legs down to the right. And as best you can, let gravity do its work. In other words, you are just softening the belly in the back, inviting that gentle twist. And then come back up and take your legs down to the right. Keep your opposite shoulder down and just allow gravity to do the work here. And then come back up, uncross the legs and we'll do the other side. So you're going to start by drawing that left knee into your chest. And again, you can hold behind the leg if you want. Relax your shoulders. Extend the leg up, taking it as straight as you can. It's okay if it's bent. You just want to feel a little stretch here in the hamstring. We're just going to extend and bend a few times. And then hold it in extension and circle your ankle. Change direction. And then bend the knee, draw it down toward your armpit. This is called half happy baby. So both legs would be happy baby. And you want to draw it, bring the thigh out to the side slightly so your body is not in the way. Bring it down toward the armpit and again grabbing wherever you can. And if you can grab the outer edge of the foot then by all means do and draw down, getting into that hip 
And then release and cross the left ankle over the right knee, bringing the right knee up. And just relax your shoulders and your neck. Let everything sink. Feel that pretty intense stretch into the hip. And then release. Cross the leg all the way. Over, arms out again, cactus, or straight out, whichever feels best for you. And then take the legs first to the left. Keep your right shoulder down and just let gravity do the work here. You are just softening, feeling this whole side elongate. Can you feel that? Feeling your breath in the belly. And then coming up and taking your legs down to the right. And just soften, softening the belly and the back. Letting gravity do the work here. You are just relaxing. And then come back up, uncross the legs. All right, roll all the way over to one side. You're gonna push yourself up, come up onto all fours. And I want you to, first of all, have your block handy. And we're going to start off in a wide knee extended child. Just a really nice passive relaxation pose, nice stretch. So you're gonna take your knees nice and wide, slide the hands out until your head comes down and just let yourself relax. So the arms are straight, but they're not engaged. So they're not completely relaxed, but they're also not really engaged. So you want them nice and straight to get a little bit of a stretch, but without working. Feel your breath in the belly. Now, walk your hands over to the right side of the mat. So you're going to place your right hand right on the edge of your mat. Place your left hand on that right hand. And then take your head down <clears throat> and very gently pull that left hip back just to feel that nice banana stretch on the left side of the body. You feel like a little banana, that crescent moon kind of feeling. And just breathe. Very slowly walk your hands over to the other side. So left hand on the edge of the mat, right hand comes right up on top of that hand. And again, you're going to let your head go down and pull that right hip back and just feel the elongation on the right side of your body. Nice gentle curve. And come back through the middle. Plant your hands again. Come back through the center and just take a breath. And then come up. Walk the hands back a little bit. Coming up onto all fours into table. <clears throat> Separate your knees. Place the left hand in the space between the hands and bring your right arm up. Press through that left hand as you open up that right arm. Feel the squeeze between the shoulder blades. Come down and thread your needle. Right arm comes all the way down. Come up onto your left fingertips and just let the right side of your head and your right arm release as you push into those left fingertips to open the left shoulder and 
draw your left hip back to feel like you're getting long on that left side. And just breathe. And then come back up, back to table. And we'll change sides. Right hand goes in the middle between the hands. Left arm comes up. Feel that twist. And then release, thread the needle all the way down until the left side of your head is resting and your left arm up onto your right fingertips, opening up that shoulder. Feeling your breath. And then come back up, back through the center, back into table, bringing your knees in so they're underneath the hips again. Walk the hands out. You might need to walk the knees back. We're going to move into an active extended child. So you're going to reach the sit bones up toward the ceiling as you press those palms, getting into the shoulders a little bit more. So here in this variation, the arms are very active, pressing the palms, reaching the sit bones back. Breathe. And then come on up and step your right foot up between your hands for a lunge. And you want to release the hips forward as you lift up, feeling open across the heart. Feel your breath. Walk your hands back, moving into reverse lunge, letting your toes come up. And what I want you to watch here is I want your spine long, which might mean your knee needs to be bent slightly, okay? So I would rather have your spine long and your knee bent than your leg straight and rounded through the back. What you're looking for is a stretch on the back of the thigh. So that's, that's the main thing you wanna feel. And then release forward. <sighs> Breathe. Now we're going to move into ragdoll and I want you to grab your block and have it handy. You're going to step your back foot up, but give yourself a nice wide stance here. Not quite as wide as your mat, but, but pretty wide. Bend your knees fully, rest your elbows on your thighs, and just allow your back to begin to release up toward your head. So feeling your muscles release as it comes up toward your head. Feel your breath in your belly. So you're letting those back muscles begin to well, change direction. <laughs> It helps release the tension. If you feel like you can go further, let the hands come down to the floor. Let your head release. Feeling the gravity. Pull the shoulder blades up toward your head. And if you want to go further, the block is there if you need it. If you want to go further, you can grab your elbows. Now remember, your torso is actually resting on your thighs. So you need a good bend in the knees here. Feel your breath in your belly. All right, now we're going to do the lunge series to the other side. So you're going to step your right foot back and drop your left knee down. And again, we're releasing the hips forward, lift up, breathe. And then walk the hands back as you let your toes come up. Reach out over your legs. So again, spine is long. And just straighten your knee as far as you can without losing that length in the spine. So if I go a little straighter, you can watch my back. It starts to round. So I'm feeling a nice stretch right into the hamstrings. And if I try and Straighten even more, my back takes it, compensates for that lack of flexibility. And then release forward. All right, step your front foot back. 
and we're going to move into full child. So I just want you to start in table, draw your belly in, round up, and set yourself back into child's pose, really rounded through the spine. Now, if you can't comfortably get your head down or if this hurts your knees, just lie on your back and bring your knees into your chest. It's a very similar benefit. You want to feel safe, secure, and comforted in this pose. And if it hurts anywhere or you're not comfortable, you are not going to feel that way. So be sure you find the position that feels the best for you. And it's okay to do this on your back. Whichever position you're in, let yourself soften between the shoulder blades. All right. Draw your belly in. Bring your hands up underneath your shoulders and press yourself up. We're going to move in to seated, and I want you to grab a lift. I usually go to about that high. And we're going to have a seat in cross legged, putting your right leg in front. So get up nice and tall on your sit bones. Feel free to be in whatever cross-legged position feels good for you right now. So maybe your feet are tucked in a little bit more, or maybe they're out for a sukhasan. Wherever it feels good for you, that is fine. Take a moment to find your spot on your sit bones. Feeling nice and open across the heart. Shoulders release away from the ears. Feel your breath, softening the muscles in your back. Breathe. Now bring your arms forward and up and overhead. Draw the belly in, lift up, arc up. And then twist to your right. You're gonna draw the belly in, lift tall, and very gently take yourself into that twist a little bit more. Now hold on to the knee with your left hand. Bring your right arm up. You're going to square the shoulders to the front as much as you can and give yourself a little side bend. Now, if it feels too hard to hold on to that leg, you can slide it down. That's just fine. It just helps to get a little bit more into that upper back area where we tend to be a little stuck. All right, come back up, back into your twist. Breathe. back through the center, sweep those arms up and overhead. And you're going to bring the right arm underneath the left and we're gonna do Garudasana now. Try and get the hands so that palms are together so you have a double wrap. If you can't do that, you can be wherever it is you can be. You can grab onto a finger or you can even just give yourself a hug, okay? Whichever position you're in, shoulders are down, elbows come up, chin into your chest. And just breathe right between the shoulder blades here. And release, bring those arms out, up and overhead, arc up. And bring the palms together down the front of your body. All right, change the cross of your legs. <clears throat> And again, getting up on top of the sit bones. Feeling your breath. Getting the breath as deep down into the belly as you can. You're going to bring the arms forward and up and overhead. Draw the belly in. Arc up. Little back bend. And then twist to your left. Draw the belly in. Lift tall and gently release to your left.
Now hold on to that left knee with your right hand as you come through the front. Left arm comes up, you're gonna reach and take it over. Give yourself a little side bend. Feel your breath. And come back up, back into the twist. And then back through the front, sweep those arms up and overhead again. And we'll do the other side. So left arm comes up and underneath the right. Wrap the hands, shoulders are down as the elbows come up, chin to the chest. Feel your breath. And release, bring those arms out, up and overhead. Palms come together, bring them down to the front of the body, right in front of your heart. Relax your shoulders. Feels good. All right, now we're going to get ready for Shavasana. We're not quite ready for it. We're going to do something beforehand, but if you want to put on your layers, you know, if you have a sweatshirt you want to put on, have a blanket handy. If you need to have your blanket for underneath your thighs, keep that handy as well. And then you need your block. If you have one, don't worry. If you don't have a block, you can do this. Just do it without the block. Okay. So we're going to come down onto your back, knees bent. And if you have a block, you're going to lift your hips up and place the block underneath your hips. And if you don't, just keep your hips on the floor. And you're going to bring your left knee up and then extend the right leg. So step one is this is, you're just loosely holding onto the left leg. You're gonna focus on extending that right leg as you draw your left knee in. Relax your shoulders, feel your breath. Feel that nice stretch right across the front of that right hip. And then release, we're gonna change sides. So you'll bring your right knee up into your chest, extend the left leg. And then again, you reach through that left leg first. You get really long as you draw the right knee in. So if you're up on a block, you're gonna get a little deeper stretch through the front of the left hip. And sometimes you can even get into the psoas area. Just relax your shoulders. and then release. All right, toes are down, lift the hips up, pull the block out. And first, place your arms, draw your shoulder blades under, arms out about 45 degrees. And then as you're ready, you're going to extend the legs and move into Shavasana. Now, just test. If you normally put a blanket up underneath your knees, you might not after doing the stretch we just did. That stretch sometimes helps alleviate the tension that, that settles into the lower back. So just test it. And if you feel like, no, I do need a little bit of a lift, you can grab your blanket and bring it up underneath your thighs, like so and then resettle. Take a couple of belly breaths and as you exhale, feel your body release and relax even more. Just feel as if you're melting into the floor. Letting your feet relax. Letting your hands relax. Softening all of the muscles in your face, 
your jaw, your eyes. Just feeling all of those muscles relax. And visualize just for a few breaths that your inhale is bringing in peace and calm. And as you exhale, your whole body is relaxing and letting go. Enjoy your relaxation. Gently begin to bring your awareness back. Moving at your fingers and your toes. And as you feel ready, you're gonna slowly bend your knees and roll to one side and just rest on your side for a moment. Make a pillow with your bottom arm. And then very slowly pushing up with your top hand, letting your head be heavy, eyes closed. Come all the way up, have a seat on your lift. And just take a couple of breaths allowing yourself to bring along that sense of calm from your Shavasana. So you can bring it into the rest of your day. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Inhaling, bring your arms up and overhead, palms come together. Bring your hands down, rest your thumbs at your forehead and set an intention for compassionate thoughts. Bring your hands down to your mouth, set an intention for compassionate words. Bring your hands down to your heart and as you bow your head to your heart, set an intention to be compassionate with yourself. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. I hope you feel so much better, more centered, more relaxed. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Hey, you're not done yet. If you're looking for something to top off that very relaxing session, check out my gratitude visualization here. Click and enjoy.